Hello, everyone. Welcome back to freepilotgroundschool.ca. This is our 11th air exercise called Slow Flight. Uh, prior to this lesson, you should have read your flight training manual on exercise 11. Uh, the aim of this exercise is to teach you how to enter and maneuver and recover from slow flight. And this is an important lesson for you to know because you will find yourself in slow flight actually quite often. Uh, when you're flying and it's important to be able to maintain control of the aircraft in slow flight it's a lot more difficult to actually fly an aircraft slowly than it is to fly it quickly let's begin with some theory as we learned in our last lesson we have a couple drag curves first off we have parasite drag remember from your ground school that parasite drag is caused by the shape of the aircraft going through the air and it's an exponential function that here we go as we increase speed the parasite drag increases. Then we also have induced drag. Induced drag is the drag caused by the lifting surface of the aircraft. It's this right here. It's an inverse function, kind of something like one over X with an asymptote of uh, zero. When we add those two curves together, we end up with total drag, this one right here. So you can see if we added this point right here plus this point right here, well, and so there's there's an area where we have uh, a minimum speed right here, right? Or a minimum drag, okay? It occurs at this speed, okay? Remember from your previous lesson, what's that called? It's called the best endurance speed. And then what do you call this speed right here, right at the end here? Well, that's your stall speed, right? You can't go any slower than that, okay? And so this speed range between best endurance and your stall speed is called your slow flight speed range. Now, right here, this is I think from the flight training manual. I'm not really quite sure why this is off. This this right here is wrong. This this range underneath here should be the slow flight speed range and it ends right here. And this one on the bottom here they got, um, but these two curves don't line up and they should. And I'm not quite sure why they don't. I guess they just weren't paying attention or something like that. But anyway, um, this one on the bottom is correct, so my apologies, but hey, I didn't make this. This was the government people that did it. So here, this range, so slow flight, and it's really important that you know this. Slow flight is a speed between best endurance and the stall speed. So just look at these curves and tell me what you think happens or aerodynamically happens. Well, for one, drag is going to be higher. Um, than at best endurance. We end up with higher drag because we have more induced drag. So when might we be in slow flight? So we're going to be in slow flight in go arounds, short and soft field landings. We're gonna learn about these all uh, later on in your training and bounce landing recoveries. Slow flight is not like, uh, like you're approaching at 65 knots coming in for landing. That's not slow flight. You're still, you're at a low power setting. Uh, when we talk about slow flight, remember how we said the drag is going to be higher. So we're actually going to be at a higher power setting, but going really slow uh, because what we're at, what it's called the back side of the power curve. So for an example, we're just about to touch down and land. And so let's say we're at 50 knots, just about to touch down. And all of a sudden, like, I don't know, a flock of ducks uh, starts. I think they're called a flock. Starts walking across the runway. We don't want to hit the ducks because we like ducks. So we decide to go around. So we apply full power, but we still only have 50 knots. We're in a nose high attitude, but we're at full power and we're in slow flight. And things can actually go rapidly wrong uh, in such a situation. We could end up stalling the aircraft, losing control. So it's important that we that we can recover from slow flight and, and properly handle that. Same thing happens, uh, let's say a shorter soft field uh, takeoff. We take off at kind of a very minimum speed in, a, in the case of a soft field takeoff. We take off, we're in a nose high, high power setting. And then we, as we get airborne, sure we got off the ground very quickly, but we do need to accelerate and get out of slow flight. So let's talk about some indications of slow flight. So just think about uh, what, you can expect to see if you are in slow flight. So remember we have, uh, we're in a high drag configuration because of high induced drag. So high drag means we're going, we're going to end up going pretty slow. You're going to end up with high power and a low speed. We'll also have a nose high attitude. Think about how the aircraft will uh, perform or control in slow flight. 
you're going to end up with sluggish ailerons because you don't have a lot of air going over the ailerons and the stall horn might very well be uh, going off. So let's talk about the procedure uh, for slow flight. So first off, when we're practicing slow flight, remember from our lesson on steep turns, we're going to do a hazel check, height, area, security, engine, and lookout. Make sure, make sure you've, you have a good lookout. If you're doing a flight test, uh, ask your examiner to take a look for you. You're going to reduce your power to 1500 RPM. And I generally recommend you lower 10 to 20 degrees of flap. Some people might say, do a flaps up, uh, which is totally okay, but 10 to 20 degrees of flaps kind of replicates uh, what slow flight would be like if you were to do a soft field takeoff. So this is what you're gonna see. So you're gonna raise the nose to reduce the airspeed to approximately 50 to 60 knots indicated airspeed. And then at a certain point, you will notice that you are unable to maintain altitude anymore with this 1500 hour, 100, um, RPM power setting, okay? And at that point, you're going to start adding power and you're going to add power to maintain level flight. And at that point, you're probably going to be between 45 to 50 knots indicated airspeed. So even though, and your power setting would be, let's say 1900 or 2000 RPM. So you'll notice you can fly around all day long at 1900 or 2000 RPM at, uh, let's just say 70 knots. And that's called the front side of the power curve. But now we're on the back side of the power curve where the drag is higher. So now we're we're going really slow even though we have a high power setting. And so that's what we're gonna do. We're just gonna use the power to maintain our altitude. If we wanna do a turn, uh, you're gonna have to add additional power to maintain altitude. And you're gonna notice that you're going to be using a lot of rudder uh, to make, let's say a left turn uh, will require quite a bit of rudder. And you will notice too when you're doing a turn uh, with slow flight, or while you are in slow flight and you wanna do a turn, you might do just a gentle turn 15 degrees, but you, your rate of turn, you're turning really quick and you're kind of turning on a dime. If you want to climb and descent in a slow flight, uh, you have to maintain the nose up attitude and you're just going to add or reduce uh, the power. But it's really important that you maintain the attitude because what's gonna happen is you could, let's say you wanna climb in slow flight just for practice sake, you add full power, but you don't maintain that attitude, you're gonna come out of slow flight. And once you do, you'll you're going to accelerate rapidly out of the slow flight range. So the question is, how do we recover from slow flight? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to lower the nose, we're gonna add full power, allowing us to accelerate, and then we're going to return to cruise flight. So it's pretty simple. Usually what students struggle on in slow flight is actually staying in slow flight. They don't stall the aircraft because they're kind of scared of stalling the aircraft, but they, they tend to come out of slow flight. They don't. They don't keep that nose high enough. So let's watch a video here on the entry, some climbs, descents, and recovery of uh, slow flight. And you'll see uh, what you can expect. And when you're watching this, just compare it to how the crew's attitude and look at, look at the various uh, things like airspeed and, and see what it's like. To enter slow flight, reduce the throttle to the RPM setting that is below the best endurance power setting. Typically in a Cessna 150 or 172, this will be approximately 1500 RPM. Maintain level flight by continuously increasing the nose up attitude until you're at approximately the gentle nose up attitude. Once you are in the slow flight range, add power approximately 1900 RPM to maintain straight level slow flight. In slow flight, you'll notice the ailerons are really sloppy. To enter a climb in slow flight, add full throttle and keep the nose in the nose up attitude to maintain your low airspeed. To enter a descent in slow flight, slowly reduce the throttle. Keep the nose relatively high so as not to come out of slow flight. To enter a turn in slow flight, do as you would in normal cruise flight, but you will likely need more rudder to maintain a coordinated turn. As well, you'll have to add a bit of throttle in order to maintain your airspeed.
to recover from a slow flight, slowly lower the nose to a gentle nose down attitude, add full power, and return to cruise. So slow flight is an exercise that's going to be graded on both your recreational and private pilot license. So you have to be familiar with it. So take a look at your flight test standards. You're going to be expected to be between five and 10 knots of your indicated stall speed. So that is going to be around 50 knots. Uh, it's kind of the speed that's for most training airplane and it can be increased slightly if you're turning or if it's turbulent. Okay. There's gonna be an expectation that there is appropriate safety precautions and lookout, so a hazel check and you want to establish and maintain uh, the aircraft in the slow flight. And when you're doing a turn, you're going to do 15 degrees. You do not want to stall the aircraft. And uh, you have the standard uh, flight test standards of 100 feet of altitude heading of 10 degrees and five degrees angle of bank. When you uh, recover, it's expected that you do it smoothly. Let's review. Slow flight is the speed range between the best endurance speed and the stall speed. It is characterized by a nose high attitude, slow airspeed, and high power setting. On entry, you want to begin with a hazel check and a good lookout, reduce power, and slow down. And once unable to maintain altitude, you're going to add power to remain level. To recover, you're going to lower the nose, apply full power, and return to, to cruise. That concludes this lesson on slow flight. Thanks so much for joining me. We'll see you on our next lesson. Uh, exercise 12, which is stalls.